Welcome back everybody to Housing Summit 2.0 Progress Report presented by ResCon and sponsored by the Toronto Real Regional Real Estate Board and the Federation of Rental Housing Providers of Toronto. I'm very pleased to now introduce the Honorable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. He was first elected as an MPP for Leeds Grenville in 2010. He was re-elected in 2011 and in 2014. And in 2018, he was re-elected as the MPP for the newly named riding of Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand things over to Minister Steve Clark. Uh, thanks, Todd. Uh, really appreciate the, the kind introduction. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I am so pleased to be here. I first uh, just want to do a shout out to, to uh, ResCon's All-Stars, uh, Richard and Amina, for inviting me to this, your second virtual housing supply summit. It's a uh, it's, it's great to be with you, even though it's virtually. Uh, I, I'm here to share an update on some of the action that, uh, that myself uh, and our government under the, the leadership of Premier Ford are doing to address Ontario's housing crisis. And you know, I think there's one thing that everyone uh, at this meeting and I can agree on that we know for certain. Uh, the construction industry is key to our province's continued prosper prosperity. You contribute over $80 billion to the province's economy last year. And, and as a leader in the sector, ResCon, you play a critical role in bringing everybody together, whether it be builders, developers, planning professionals, and other stakeholders to identify ways that we can all effectively build Ontario's housing supply. Um, you know, summits like this are really evidence of the leadership that ResCon has. And I wanna thank all of you for your ongoing partnership and your support. I, I think you know that our government was reelected on a, on a strong mandate uh, to help more Ontarians find a home that meets their needs and their budget. But a, a, a shortage in supply and a strong demand for homes has really been driving prices out of reach for too many Ontarians. People are desperately looking for housing that they can afford. So we know that everyone uh, who realizes housing plays such an important role in their lives want to make sure that there's a safe, comfortable place that they can all, that they can call home. So you know, the other thing that we know is that the province holds uh, some pretty big levers uh, to be able to spark some of this development. We decided as a government that we were gonna prioritize housing supply. Uh, in our first mandate, we were able to, through my ministry, provide two housing supply action plans. Uh, one in 2019, more homes, more choice. And one earlier this year, more homes for everyone. More homes, more choice really provided a roadmap to help address the housing challenges that our province was facing at that time. It was really a call to action uh, for the need to build more homes because of our rapidly growing population in Ontario. And, and it's been effective. You know, since the plan was introduced, we've seen a tremendous uh, upscale tick in the amount of building that's taken place in Ontario. And last year, as you all know, we had over 100,000 starts, which was the highest uh, number of starts since, since 1987, and was well above the annual average of 67,500 starts that we've seen over the past 30 years. We also saw a record amount of purpose-built rental starts, uh, over 13,000 starts last year, which was the highest we've seen since 1991. So even so, even with those great numbers in 2021, we know that it's not enough. And that's why we want to build upon the progress that we made by introducing that More Homes for Everyone plan earlier this year, it laid out some very specific ways that we can get rid of red tape, that we can end bureaucratic inefficiencies that really drive up the cost of homes uh, and are creating options that just are out of sight for renters and buyers. More Homes for Everyone really delivered on some very practical solutions that uh, our partners need to move forward on. Uh, they include additional measures to increase housing supply and to make housing more affordable uh, across the province. Using these recommendations as a roadmap, we remain committed to delivering a housing supply action plan 
every year in this four-year mandate to bring more policies and more tools to support things like multi-generational housing and missing mental housing. One of the things that uh, I think I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about was the bill that just got passed in the legislature, the Strong Mayors uh, Building Homes Act. Premier Ford and I have been working closely with municipalities to identify opportunities and bold solutions that would help us in our housing supply challenge. And in January, uh, we met with big city mayors and regional chairs, and also representatives from rural, remote, and northern municipalities about how we can get more housing built faster. Uh, one thing that we heard loud and clear from was our municipal partners is that we is that we need to get shovels in the ground faster. We need to empower uh, municipalities to be able to do that precisely and ensure that they have not just the tools, but also the flexibility to build more housing faster. And that's why we introduced more homes for everyone. Um, uh, the strong mayor's bill uh, essentially gives the tools to those two mayors to cut through red tape and get shovels in the ground faster. And, and we know that in the next decade, a third of Ontario's growth is going to take place in Toronto and Montreal and Toronto and Ottawa. So the new legislation and the associated regulations would give those two mayors in Toronto and Ottawa the power to drive policy changes, to select uh, municipal department heads, and importantly, bring forward a budget. Strong mayor systems empower municipal leaders to work more effectively with the province to reduce timelines for development, to standardize processes and address local barriers to increasing the housing supply. We want to empower our municipal partners to be able to get things done. And we're counting on these mayors uh, to cut red tape and get housing built faster so that more families can realize the dream of attainable home ownership. We believe that the strong mayor system provides a new tool to deliver it on our shared provincial municipal priorities, including our commitment to build 1.5 million homes over the next decade. So we'll have more to say after the election. We wanna make sure as a government that we land this correctly for Toronto and Ottawa. And uh, you know, again, we'll be watching some of the municipal races uh, after October 24th to see if there's an opportunity to expand the program elsewhere. So I, I, I'm just gonna close uh, by saying that something that I think ResCon has heard me say many, many times before, there's no silver bullet uh, to solving the housing crisis. The need for change though, it's clear. There's now a strong consensus based on clear evidence that housing supply is the core problem. And without an increase uh, in housing supply to match the increase in demand, housing prices are still gonna rise and more and more Ontarians are not gonna be able to afford a home that meets their needs and their budget. So, so right now, uh, as Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, I'm focused on the how, right? How do we get the full range of housing options built faster? How do we make it easier for Ontarians to find a home that they can afford? And this is a long-term process. It's a long-term process that requires long-term commitment and collaboration from all levels of government and importantly with our industry partners. I'm so very proud that ResCon is one of those partners that is willing to work with us to take action to address the lack of housing supply. And I firmly believe that together, we're gonna to make it easier for Ontarians and their families to find that home that they need and deserve. So just thanks for giving me this opportunity. Uh, bold action is, uh, is on the way for housing supply in Ontario. And we wanna make sure that our partners uh, at ResCon are there with us every step of the way. So thanks for uh, giving me this chance to, uh, to bring remarks virtually uh, from the beautiful riding of Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rio Lake. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much, Minister Clark. I uh, appreciate your time and uh, love those strong mayor legislation pieces you're putting together. We'll see what happens on October 24th. I'm sure there will be other mayors lining up uh, to get some of that cutting red tape power.
Um, our next session will begin at 2.55. Um, that will be outstanding housing reforms needed to increase supply. And those, that session will be introduced by Amina, who ResCon's very own, who Minister Clark gave a shout out to just now. And that will include Mike Moffat, Eric Lombard, and Chris Hornberg. They will be discussing what changes are required to increase housing supply and how they will complement existing reforms already made. So that will be introduced by Amina at 2.55. And then following that at 3.40, there'll be a session on choice, widespread choice led by ResCon's Michael Giles. Giles and um, they're gonna be uh, talking obviously about how to get more affordable housing, housing uh, and some of the other choices that are available in the housing market. So both sessions will be introduced by ResCon moderators. So you just click on the agenda, go to that session and the next one starts at 2.55. So you've got a little break to uh, say hi to all the other attendees online and uh, go online and chat. And I think Minister Clark and his uh, staff are, are gonna be available online to answer any questions if you have following his remarks. So I'll let you navigate the app and we'll uh, you'll see Amina join you at 2.55. Thanks very much, everybody.